Hey everybody, you may be wondering why the thumbnail is a picture of a jacked woman and a low body fat male holding a syringe. And that is because today we're talking peptides, in particular CJC-1295. We've discussed CJC pretty extensively, so this isn't a full dive. The purpose of this video is to answer the question, why the DAC? What is the difference between CJC-1295 DAC and CJC-1295 without it? So the company that initially produced CJC-1295 Conjuchem Biotechnologies likes naming things after themselves, hence the CJC, Conjuchem. We've established that CJC-1295 is a GHRH, like sermorolin, mimicking release of growth hormone releasing hormone, which is typically released from the hypothalamus. Now, DAC stands for Drug Affinity Complex, and it's a pharmaceutical technology developed by Conjuchem that extends peptide half-life by essentially linking it to a reactive chemical group. And by doing so, the peptide remains biologically active, while chemical reaction of the attached complex conjugates the peptide to albumin. So what happens is you take CJC-1295 attached to a linked reactive compound. Cross-reaction binds CJC-1295 to albumin, which is a protein that, among other rules, acts as a carrier that transports the bound peptide throughout the body and extends its half-life. In humans, albumin has a half-life of 12 to 19 days, thus extending the half-life of the biologically active CJC-1295 that's attached to it. This is why CJC-1295 with DAC has such an extensive half-life, approximately 6 to 8 days. This means that it takes about a week for half of CJC-1295 with DAC to leave our circulation. At the same time, being attached to a carrier protein like albumin allows transport of the peptide throughout the body. There is no data stating CJC's half-life without the DAC. However, since it's a modified version of sermorolin, which has a half-life of minutes, likely under half an hour, we can imagine that CJC-1295 without the drug affinity complex has a similarly short half-life as well. So it's safe to say that people use CJC-1295 due to the fact that it lasts so long. The caveat with this is that growth hormone is released in a pulsatile fashion, in spurts. So using a compound with such a long half-life may not be physiologically representative of how we produce growth hormone ourselves. At the same time, I'm forced to wonder if continued use over weeks, for instance, would desensitize growth hormone release given the fact that there will likely be a big increase in IGF-1, its downstream product. One study in 2006 may exhibit that this is not the case, however, there were few research subjects and I wouldn't hang my hat on it. Regardless, I hope you found this video helpful and that it may help further delineate between DAC versus no DAC. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button to keep things going here at the channel.